So the two primary reasons why you want to use hashtags is to get discovered and to engage with followers. And it also helps build authority for your brand. If you become the source of a trending topic, that is a great byproduct of using hashtags. And I want to talk for just a minute, just in general, about why we use hashtags. They were invented as a way to sort content on social streams. I think the genesis was on Twitter, but it's that hashtag symbol, the number symbol, and you see a lot of people using them. They got picked up as like a little ironic tool too. Once when they got really popular and people were tagging things, people started to use it sort of ironically, like you'd put a whole sentence in there and sort of as a joke, but they are actually a pretty powerful tool for building and growing your audience. It's kind of a shorthand and you can pick a particular topic and in Instagram and on Twitter, you can follow a hashtag and get fed the stream of just that subject. Emily, I'm going to say something that's in your world, but, but like you could say, well, you could say local food, right? You could just follow local food if you wanted to. Now you would get every post that has been submitted with local food, which is kind of a big stream to get. But if that's a topic that you really wanted to pay attention to, or you were trying to do some research on, you could actually just follow a hashtag and then the internet would serve up all of the posts that are using that tag. We have a couple. We, in particular, follow the VA Foodie hashtag because we asked our followers to use VA Foodie as a hashtag to make us aware of their posts. So we, we asked, we actually had to teach our audience how to use VA Foodie and by saying share and be shared by tagging your posts, not posting your tags, tagging your posts, hashtag VA Foodie. When we started, there were zero posts. And what do we get now? Like, if you do a search for VA Foodie, that's like, there has to be like a million posts by now. Hundreds of thousands. Yeah, I think it's hundreds of thousands in the high hundreds of thousands. High hundreds of thousands, which it's actually almost a little bit, almost a little bit bloated. But so the two things, if you use popular tags, that people are interested in. It's an opportunity for you to get discovered because you're using terms that people search on or follow. And then the other one is you can engage with your followers like we have with VA Foodie. We've asked people to use a hashtag or if you're running a campaign, you can tell your followers to tag their posts with a particular phrase and then you can see them using your tag and you can you can like and comment and share on the things that they're doing or whatever the rules are that you've made for your campaign. The other thing that you can do with hashtags is you can actually research on tags because it'll give you some insight into your audience. So if you pay attention to what your audience is using when they tag. There are people that you have followed, who have followed back, who are particularly engaged with you. You can look at the tags that they're using and see what topics that they're interested in. And then you can use those tags as part of your research and strategy on building content that's gonna continue to sort of grow similar followers. If you if there's people that you like that you think are pretty highly engaged with your brand and you look at the things that they're interested in, you can use that research to find similar people and you can start building a group of followers who are the kind of people that you want to be talking to, people who are going to like your brand. So we're just talking about hashtags and why you would use them and why they're important to help grow your audience. Some of the things on Facebook, Facebook doesn't really, really use hashtags. I mean, you can search on hashtags, but you can't really follow uh, a tag. And so you want less is more because the ideal Facebook character count for a post is around 40 to 80 characters. And you want to use like your brand hashtag and maybe one or two others. But if you're posting a holiday post like National Hot Dog Day, or kind of the ones that we recommend in our calendar, those would be good ones to use on Facebook because those are gonna be like on trend for that particular event. 
So you can't really follow hashtags on Facebook, but you can search them. On Twitter, you're also limited by character counts. So the ideal number is going to be one or two per post. You can certainly follow hashtags on Twitter. And that's how the majority of people who really want to use Twitter interact with content. So a lot of Twitter users will use or follow hashtags or even search on tags during the day. And some of that's because the life of a Twitter post is so, so short. And people kind of either, either have it on all day, being alerted all day that someone's talking to them, or you kind of like dip in and out. And so the tags there are more of like a sorting because there's just millions and millions of little short posts to get through. And hashtags are a way to really use the content, it, especially when you see these like trending news things take off. You know, somebody starts a tag and then people start following it and then they start sharing and commenting on it. It's a lot. It's much more active in Twitter. But because even though Twitter's lengthen their post account, there's still really short bursts of information. And you really only want to have like one or two tags on your posts. Instagram is the big one. Hashtags are really important to a successful Instagram profile. And Instagram limits you to 30 tags per author of the post. So you can put all 30 in the main post, or you can add them as a comment after the post, as long as you are the author. I see a lot of everyday users commenting in the comments and using hashtags they're actually not having that post rise up in a topic. Instagram is sorting hashtags by the author. I'm stepping out there, Emily, but they haven't changed that rule recently. I know there's been a lot of changes. I don't think so. I think that's still the rule. Yeah. So you see people will write a comment and then hashtag, hashtag, or they're trying to draw attention maybe to someone else with a hashtag. They're actually not really doing anything. They're putting the words in the comments below the post, but it's not going to rise up on the search for someone else. Instagram allows you 30 posts. I'm going to circle back to, to our diagram here in the handout. And the way we've sorted this, you should have a handful of branded hashtags that you're using. Like we use VA Foodie. We also will use locally sourced or local food or locally owned. Those are ones that kind of go on brand with VA Foodie. And then you should fill out the rest of your 30 slots with hashtags that come from small, medium, and large buckets of followers, meaning the number, the quantity of posts that the tag gets. And the reason you want to do small, medium, and large is that just like I mentioned earlier, there's like a ton of posts out there and people search on tags. You'll rise to the top on that search for until you get moved off the top list. So if all of your tags come from these big giant pools, you only have a small amount of time to be at the top of that search. But smaller and medium buckets of followers, or I would say users of a post, not followers, but users of a tag, allow you to have your content show up in front of different audiences. And this is the moment where I'm going to pass this over and let Emily talk a bit more about this because she's the one that builds our hashtag strategy for our posts. Hello, everybody. Like George mentioned, I am the, you know, decider of hashtags for Virginia Foodie and for our clients and strategies will vary as Instagram changes its algorithm. But this is what we have found to work for us at this moment in time. It's still, you know, marketing is an ever changing thing. But for right now, we, like George mentioned, the big buckets, medium buckets and small buckets, the kind of delineation is big buckets have posts in the millions and it'll be the context is within your industry. So if you're doing, if you have a really popular product or, you know, you're doing like hashtag plant-based, th those are big, a lot of people follow those types of things. So it'll be, you know, within the scope of your subject, but like George mentioned, the big buckets you have, it's a flash in the pan. You get a second to, to make an impression on that hashtag and then it's over because so many people are tagging all the time. 
medium buckets and small buckets, hundreds of thousands and tens of thousands, again, depending on your subject matter, you have a longer shot at getting a top spot on those hashtags. Another thing that we suggest if a company has vastly different types of content, like if someone has like a working farm and they want to share hashtag farm life and they also want to share their products, break those hashtag groups or break the hashtags into groups and have, you know, a farm life set. If you make peanut butter, a peanut butter set, you know, break it down to to match the content and you can always measure the success of these groups periodically because Instagram is always changing. And we'll share, we do use some tools. There's a lot out there. We'll share these in a PDF after the fact, along with pros and cons of each tool. We use allhashtag.com and we cross-reference it with Instagram, like the amounts of posts per, per tag to figure out those buckets of content. Like we mentioned earlier, You're also going to want to do social listening for hashtags that your competitors are using. And that's kind of, you're expanding the, you know, the reach of your ear on social media, basically, by finding out what makes potential customers tick on social media. And that's also with the, the hashtag following George mentioned earlier. So like I mentioned, we use all hashtag to cross-reference that with Instagram. It's a free tool. It is as good as a free tool can be, I think. (laughs) But there are some paid tools as well. Right Tag is a popular one. That one's a little bit more pricey, but you can have a lot of analytics attached to that as well. There's also hashmeapp.com, and that's for people that want to use an app for it, like are managing it on their phone more so. I've heard that that's really popular with people that manage their accounts purely on mobile. And there's also some good tools that you can upload your photos. If you're having a hard time figuring out where to start, I always suggest a tool that you can upload your photos to, and it uses AI to kind of deduce what that what's in the photo and to give you hashtags based on that. One of those is Foderloo. It's a weird spelling, but we'll send it in the PDF after the fact. Is That's a good one. I think Hash Me App does that as well. And you can also search tags based on keywords too in most of these, which is how we use uh, allhashtag.com. You just enter in some keywords and it gives you a list of top hashtags uh, for that keyword. We have some examples of some hashtag research we did with Corey, and this is kind of an example of these big buckets in small and medium buckets. Do you want to talk about that a little bit, Em? Sure. So Corey's company, Red Root & Co., this was a little bit of a challenge for us because it was a lot different from a lot of the other brands that we do this kind of research for. So she has plant-based tonics and other culinary ingredients that are come from forage and locally sourced ingredients. And so as you can see, the amount of posts per um, tag is not super huge, but for those types of content, that is the bigger buckets in there. And so we spread it apart between, I think this is, the list is in, not in post order. So that's a little bit hard to read. Sorry about that. But (laughs) you see things like shop small, that's got a ton you know, herbalist, that still has, you know, close to a million posts. And then you see in here, like, hashtag botanical goodness, that has a smaller amount of posts. So, you know, like, there are a smaller amount of people looking at those tags. But from my research, the people using those tags are buying from multiple similar brands. They're really engaging in these posts. They're commenting, they're liking, they're tagging their friends. So, you know, don't sleep on the smaller hashtag groups because they will generate a lot of engagement for you. Yeah, there's a bunch of research now on micro and nano influencers and how working or connecting with people who are really, really engaged can be beneficial to your brand. Carolyn asked a question, which is how do you measure hashtag effectiveness? You have to, I mean, what I would suggest is make sure It's not like you set it and forget it, hashtag lists. You always need to be measuring them with how many people are getting to your profile from that hashtag. You can see that in Instagram in your insights, but we also, we use Planoly and you can measure that from, you know, these certain tools as well. But it should be, we check our hashtag group maybe three or four times a year because it does change. You know, you'll find, you know, certain times of year you'll get 
heavier traffic from certain hashtags. So you can measure effectiveness through insights and Instagram. And you can also use some of these tools that we mentioned to make sure that you're not wasting one of your 30 chances to get someone's eyeball on your brand that you wouldn't normally have. Liz, I see that you're out there. You do a lot of strategic research. Is there a tool that you use for hashtags? So most of the research that I do, I just do natively on Instagram just to see like how many posts are in the category, kind of like what you have here. I do use hashtag groups and Planoly because I feel like it just makes it so much easier and faster to sort of like have groups. And then the way I think of it is like, there's probably like maybe 10 hashtags that could kind of work for everything. And then I try to add like 10 to 15 hashtags that are really specific to that thing. So for me, if I'm posting food, it's like literally like hashtagging the ingredients or like whether it's vegan or gluten-free or things like that. So I kind of have like my core group and then like the specific ones. And I usually just do the specific ones like based on what I'm seeing on Instagram. Yeah, I love the groups function in Planoly for stuff like that. We've had clients for social media that have had, you know, they make pizza and they also make wine and they also make cheese. That's just an example of a real company that we worked with. But, you know, having a group for each of those subject matters and planally, that's so easy to toggle back and forth, depending on what kind of content you're scheduling. It's great. Yeah. I suggest. (laughs) One thing that we haven't tested in a while, we did this probably about a year ago, is whether you put all of your tags in your original caption or your first comment. We looked into it (laughs) and found that it it kind of worked fine to have one or two tags in the caption and then used Planoly for our first post to put the rest of the tags in there. However, they've started to do better at putting things sort of below the fold. Have you done any of that research yet, Liz? I haven't. I usually either put just like two or three hashtags in the caption and then the rest of them I put like in a comment below, only because like my captions are usually pretty long. (laughs) So sometimes I actually run out of room if I try to put all all the hashtags in there too. Yeah, that is true. That is true. (laughs) Because the trend is going towards longer, longer captions. Yeah, I almost didn't, like we talked about it the other day, Emily, and I almost thought, I don't know that we need to because we're not seeing any slam for using that first comment. And again, what I said earlier is that the tags from the author count in the search, but other comments from other people don't really make your content bubble up on search that way. Does anybody have any other questions or things that they wanted to ask about tagging, hashtagging? Where do you see that on Instagram? Where do you see how your hashtags have performed? If you tap post insights and then scroll to the bottom, it'll show you like impressions from home, from hashtags, from profile, from other. Thank you for that. But they still don't have them for reels and it's driving me crazy because I really want to know like the analytics of reels. You think that they would, they're really pushing that hard. I know, it's like, okay, I know these are getting more views, but like from where? Right. (laughs) So what did you... If you go to insights, it's somewhere below that. Is that? It's, if you go to insights, I'll pull it up and add it to that, our document. So you'll see screen grabs of how to get to there. And also we use Planoly as well. So I'll I'll mention that in the, the tool there. Yeah, we'll just, we'll add it to the PDF so that you have a screen grab. That was a good question. Thank you. Did you have a question, Carolyn? Yeah, I was, I was, went to one of our posts and to the insights. So I guess I was trying to understand, like, if I use the post or the hashtag ice cream, which is, you know, I couldn't necessarily see how that specific of a hashtag performs. It's really the whole group of them. Is that what I'm understanding? Both, all of them together make an effective strategy, but you can test individual ones on Instagram. If you're using it, if you're using just on Instagram or if you're using any sort of tools, you can see which hashtags are coming to you. It won't tell you specifically, Instagram won't, but it'll tell you how many people got an impression of your post via hashtags. If you go to the post itself, it's actually under your post itself and then view insights and you can see from hashtags. It's mostly you test as you go. like. I will test a group at a time just because I like 
I think it's easier, but you could test individuals at a time and, and just change them out and see, oh, am I getting more? Am I getting less? Are these types of people that am I seeing an increase in engagement right now using this group of hashtags or this hashtag in particular, as opposed to other groups? Yeah, you do have to kind of keep a list somewhere and kind of keep track of it a little bit because you're right. It is from hashtags in general. Mm -hmm. We use sheets in Google to measure our social analytics monthly and quarterly to analyze hashtag groups effectiveness. 